Another update. Another update. Am I out of it? It's been like, what, 18 days now that this has been going on. Uh, I'm beyond the word exhausted is like an understatement. Um, the whole house situation, probably best I don't talk about it because... Like, I have a good friend. I haven't known him a long time, but he's turning into a really good friend. And he got the just of... And, you know, it's like... <sighs> he's like, wow, this is really serious. Like, a person that has no mental problems whatsoever, no anxiety, no OCD, no depression, whatever. I have all three. That would be going through what I'm going through with. Would be so stressful. You know. And on top of that, I have to deal with. And then when I tell him the other stuff that's on my plate... But um, it's early in the morning here in Texas. Um, two hours of sleep last night. About. This is like 18 days. I can't say I didn't sleep in 18 days. That would be a lie. But to say that I get between 20 minutes to two hours of sleep a night. Maximum two hours. For 18 days. Like. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've never... I've been... I'm normally a sleeper. Like, I sleep a lot. I can sleep. I don't recall having this less amount of sleep for 18 days straight. I still have... And I'm taking modium still have explosive like diarrhea every day every day um, I just you know I'm still getting a run around my pain clinic is telling me that they will allow my primary doctor to put me on benzodiazepines as well as a sleeping pill. I don't know if she'll do both. Um, but I have to give them my pain medicine. And get no more refills. I've been on pain pills for over 10 years. I've tried to get off of them. If I try to get off of them, I have withdrawal symptoms. The withdrawal symptoms is anxiety. I'm already going through anxiety. I can't sleep. I haven't slept for 18 days hardly at all, right? Day and night anxiety. Then I also get off my pain pills, which is going to take my anxiety that's already, you know, on cloud, up in the clouds and shoot it to another universe. Um, so if they don't give me strong sleeping pills or Ambien, which really is the only sleeping pill that really actually has helped me sleep in the past is Ambien as well as some strong benzodiazepines or I wish they would put me on I think it's clozapine or clozapam um, because with Xanax and Ativan it's after you have to take them like every few hours and your body gets used to constantly take them and that, that has a higher addiction rate so I think it would be better that they put me on I think it's clonopin or clozapam um, I believe that stays in the system longer. Like you may take it like maybe one or two or three times a day instead of five or six or whatever. But it it's not fast acting. It doesn't, you know, give away. It doesn't quickly work and then go away. It kind of stays, you know, and mellows you out. So maybe I should, so if I take something like that, I wouldn't have to take it as often. Um... 
and you know, I don't want to be on these pills for the rest of my life. I could, I have legitimate anxiety. I just want to be put on for like a month or maybe two or three weeks to keep me calm enough to where I can relax in a day and then maybe sleeping pill at night so I can finally get some rest. But they're going to have to be strong because for them to put me on these, the only way is, is if I give up my pain pills. That in and of itself will cause me to have withdrawal symptoms, which will cause my pre-existing anxiety, which is already there, for 18 days to go up. You know, facing the fact that I might not even be able to afford the taxes on my home is one thing. And then another thing that I may lose the home because of some legal issues. And having a friend find out the whole gist of the thing and looking at me and saying, wow, this is serious. Um, and it would be so nice to just have just like a whole day or three days of no or very little anxiety and a good 10 hours sleep. 10 hours for the next 3 days. Not 8. I know you can't really catch up on sleep, but people try it, you know, to say, I need to catch. Yeah. If there is a, it's such a, you can't really catch up on sleep. Studies have shown, but. I don't deserve 8. I deserve 10 or 12. Just for 3 days. Just to give my body a freaking break. Um. I haven't started to hallucinate yet, but my primary doctor did say that, you know, eventually if you don't get the proper sleep, you can start hallucinating. What I don't understand is I'm so exhausted and you would think that my body would just out. Um, but I watch the time I go to bed I lay there, I toss and turn, and the last thing, the last thing I look, you know, was at the, at the time, and it'll be like, let's say, three in the morning, and then at four ten a.m., I'm awake and wide awake, in in sweat, and I'm like, well, if the last time I looked at the clock was three o'clock in the morning, because my phone's right next to me, and now it's four ten, that means I could have not gotten more than an hour and a half of sleep. And that's if I fell asleep the last time I looked at my clock, which was 3 a.m. It's that type of thing that I've been going through for 18 days. So when I say I've been sleeping less than two hours a night, it's, yeah. Or I'll go to bed like, you know, at 11, toss and turn, maybe like 12.45, and then I'll wake up at 1.30, sweating. And then the rest of the night, I just, I either just lay there and stare at the ceiling or I just go in the living room where I have a rug and I just pace that and or running back to the bathroom with stomach cramping up. For 18 days this has been going on. And when I try to leave the house... It's a little bit better because I have to take in the senses, you know, like if I go for a walk, it's not a lot better. And driving, it's, it's dangerous for me to drive like this. It's very dangerous. There is a dollar store not too far from the house. You can walk there in five minutes, ten, ten minutes, ten minutes. And the other day, I was like, it was late at night. I, I couldn't sleep. It wasn't late, late at night, but, you know, couldn't sleep anyway. And I went there, and I just walked around the store, just trying to, like, read things, look at things, products. To get my mind, to stimulate my mind, and 
I'm like, I'm not falling asleep, but I'm like, dang, you know, I'm so tired. Now I can finally go home and sleep. No. No. And my stomach. If I tell you what I ate yesterday, you're going to be like, that is it. The day before that, the day before that. I just don't have any appetite. And I'm thinking too, you know, maybe... I know all this is because of my anxiety. I'm not saying the medicine I'm on is doing this. But I'm thinking that the medicine may be adding to it. It's possible the Zoloft is adding to my lack of sleep. To making it even harder for me to sleep. And the abuse bar... Now that I'm taking for anxiety, which is not doing anything. That increases dopamine. How are you going to sleep when you have a bunch of dopamine going on? Does that make any sense? Does dopamine sound like an upper or a downer? It doesn't sound like it was something to help you sleep. So, maybe that or both medicines. The Zoloft and the abuse bar, abuse bar increases dopamine. Could just push in this. I can't see how I've lasted this long. I want to sleep so bad. torture this is like this is torture and it's not just the sleep but the anxiety too and the stomach cramping up and the diarrhea when I say I have diarrhea every single day for 18 days I have diarrhea for 18 days and many times more than once or twice sometimes like that's why I have to drink a lot of water because if I'm you know having and you're thinking, well, how are you having so many bowel movements if you're not eating? I'm eating. I'm just not eating that much. Like when I take my medicine, I'll eat like a half of a banana, you know, or I'll eat like a handful of uh, pecans. What I've been trying to do lately, and for actually some time now, is just put everything in a blender and drink it. Because the chewing action and swallowing food, I guess my body knows I'm I'm eating. And then, you know, I my, my stomach is saying, no, I don't want food. I'm upset. But drinking my food is like drinking water. It's, I kind of trick my stomach that way. And uh, I am taking psyllium husk. Because I know if I don't have any substance, refrage, bulkage, substance, then liquid's going to go right through me, of course. So, yeah, I'm taking psyllium husk um, in capsule form. Uh, and I may have one bowel movement every other day that's wet with some form but most of my bowel movements are just like it's as if I'm urinating urine out my rectum like I said it's it's I, I'm surprised I've lasted this long <gasps> between the lack of sleep losing so much liquid anxiety does not stop like it does not turn off Sleep so bad. As I go in that bed, my mind starts. And the anxiety starts. The like anxiety is always there. Like, it doesn't turn off. But, like, it goes from being there to being here. 
to being here and then back down to here, but it never goes down to zero. For 18 days, it has never went down to zero. Well, when I had that Spravata treatment, yeah, I was high as a kite. I was hallucinating, you know, maybe for a whole minute. But even that, after a little bit of time, then boom, even, even as, as I was doing the high on Spravata, ketamine, the anxiety came, it, you know, it just creeped right back in during my trip. <sighs> yeah, I tried to eat a bean burrito the other day, Amy's vegan bean burrito, just beans and rice. I couldn't, I, it's not that big of a burrito. I couldn't finish it. I ate almost half, almost half. And then my stomach started cramping up and I'm like, I can't eat anymore. So it's not like I'm not, you know, I, I am trying to eat. All right, well that's the, the update. I'm gonna go lay back down, hope that I sleep, but it's not being negative when I say I'm doubtful because 18 days this has been going on. Is what it is. Hopefully I'll get better eventually and I'll start doing food reviews. <laughs>